Quaith. My name is Lawrence Johnny. I'm from the Swepnik Nation, the Lakes Division, which is in the Salmon Arm, Salmon Arm area. They're called the uh, Swit Swamp. <laughs> I was, I guess I was supposed to bring some papers with me on empathy. This was mine. And uh, I have a problem with, uh, how do you, I have a problem with interrupting other people in their conversations. And empathy is, uh, was stated in it, which really caught my eye was that you should be able to learn to sit and listen through a whole conversation just in case what you want to say might already be said by the presenter. So I've been practicing that for the last yesterday since I got my email and people have been giving me strange looks. Like, okay, what's wrong with you? Why aren't we hearing from you? <laughs> I go, I'm practicing empathy. I'm supposed to listen. And they, really? <laughs> but um, it's been a good experience just sitting there and actually a lot of conversation. I go to a lot of meetings and I usually have a problem with jumping in when I'm not supposed to, but I've been sitting there listening to the, at these meetings and they're pretty interesting when I don't interrupt. And uh, that's what I've learned so far and that's what I've been practicing. Thank you. Any questions? No? <laughs> Difference in you know in your relationships with people. It it um, the the difference that I've noticed is that people have actually really thought they were doing something wrong, like saying something wrong because I haven't interrupted them. They're, they go, they're so used to me jumping in and helping them in a conversation. They go, well, what did I forget? I got nothing. Actually, really, it's. If I would have waited long enough, the last couple of times, you probably would have said everything. Mm -hmm. And they go, really? They're quite surprised that I don't have anything to say mm -hmm. if I just sit there and listen. Awesome. Did you think of your question? Mm -hmm. Good evening, good evening everyone, my name is Daniel Joe. I am from the Splatsine First Nation, uh, which is in the interior, it's one of the 17 bands of the Shushwap Nation, and I'm really glad to be here tonight, and I'm going to be talking a bit about um, um, aggressive communication, and uh, first I'll give you a few uh, definitions of uh, aggressive communication, um, and it deals with approaches Conflict as a power struggle, tries to control and overpowers others in the conversation, uh, discounts feelings of others, communicates using criticism, blame, defensiveness, and pressure, operates from a belief system of his or her own personal rights, not balanced with the rights of others. So, in my personal experiences in uh, aggressive communication with others, and then I'll use some of my own personal experiences uh, in aggressive communication, I uh, come across people who in aggressive communication as, uh, what's the word I should use? Um, maybe belligerent. Uh, they seem to know um, everything that we're talking about in a conversation or on a topic, and uh, they may be always cutting in on the conversation and not letting other people finish the conversation. Um, uh, for one example, from my own experience, in all these fisheries, as an example, talking to a fisheries person in the field, and um, they're really wanted to just 
talk about their own rights and beliefs and not really listen to what I had to say. And so what happened eventually was I just shut down. I just let them talk and because there was no way I could say a conversation or a piece of a conversation and so I just let them talk. And it really just ended like that, the conversation. So that's a personal experience of mine and I just find that uh, aggressive communication is not a win-win situation for all the people involved and it's just, it's not, it's not a good way to communicate with others. So in conclusion, I would just like to uh, just reiterate, reiterate what I just said about uh, aggressive communication not being a, a win-win situation for people. And I thank you all for coming out tonight and listening to me speak. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, how, how did it make you feel inside when people were like that with you? When they were interrupting or belligerent or aggressive? Yes, thank you. That's a good question. Um, how I felt inside was like my opinion wasn't uh, didn't matter much and they didn't really take into consideration how I felt about things and um, my feelings were hurt and frustrated probably some anger just simmering okay thank you seven tribes of the Nisbat people, and I'm a killer whale, <laughs> a killer whale woman, although I thought I'd do something else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, sorry. Anyways, um, my topic tonight is on effective listening skills, and I would like to talk about that because I had a problem with that for years, and never ever listened properly, but preferred to do a lot of the talking instead in groups and with friends. Anyways, um, if expressing our wants, feelings, thoughts, and opinions clearly, effectively is the only, only half of the communication process needed for interpersonal effectiveness. And the other half is listening and understanding what others communicate to us. In the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the habits is if you want to be understood, listen. Or in Stephen Covey's words, seek first to understand, then be understood. First seek to understand the other person, then and only then try to be understood. Covey presents this habit as the most important principle of the interpersonal relations. Effective listening is not simply echoing what the other person has said through the lens of one's own experience. Rather, it is putting oneself in the perspective of the other person, listening and Empathetically, empathetically to, for both feeling and meaning. One of the biggest mistakes many people make is to want to be heard. What about listening to what others have to say first? <laughs> Let's listen to the speaker and hear what the speaker would like to share. Yeah, that's it, sharing. <laughs> Do you think the speaker speaks from the heart? What is the theory of what is being said? Everyone is allowed their own opinion. There is never any wrong way to, that anything is done. We speak from open hearts. When we listen to someone who has a learning disability, we can tell. When I say someone with a learning disability, I mean someone who has stopped growing. Someone who is too set in their ways that there is no way to think but their own way. They have stopped listening effectively. Woodrow Wilson says, the ear of the leader must be must ring with the voices of the people. To me, that means the leader speaks from the heart. She has heard her people. And this is what effective listening skills is about. It's about mirroring the needs of the people. There's an old saying that I still hear being used by many. It's, we're, we were given two ears but only one mouth because listening is twice as hard as talking, which is very true. <laughs> According to Dr. Larry Nadek, there are three types of listening 
styles, competitive or combative listening happens when we are more interested in promoting our own point of view than in understanding or exploring someone else's point of view. We listen for openings to take the floor or flaws or for flaws or weak points we can attack. As we pretend to pay attention, we are patiently waiting for an opening or internally formulating our rebuttal and planning our devastating comeback that will destroy the argument and make us the victor. In passive, attentive listening, we are, oh, that's, this is number two, in passive or attentive listening, we are genuinely interested in hearing and understanding the other person's point of view. We are attentively and passively listening. We assume that we are heard, understood correctly, but stay passive and do not verify it. Number three, the active or reflective listening is the single most useful and important listening skill. In active listening, we also genuinely we are also genuinely interested in understanding what the other person is thinking, feeling, wanting, or what the message means, and we are active in checking out our own understanding before we respond to our new message. We restate or paraphrase our understanding of their message and reflect it back to the sender for verification. This verification or feedback process is what distinguishes active listening and makes it effective. When I realized I wanted to be a counselor, <laughs> I wanted to understand people more. More specifically, I wanted to understand my own people. I had one major problem. I like to talk. I wrote this and I, <laughs> I put this and it says, I was in a retentive. <laughs> I had the ability to learn, but not with the heart. I had textbook knowledge, but that was useless because I was one of those combative listeners. <laughs> I used to want to learn. I knew I wanted to learn to listen, so I searched for better women's service, support services because back in the mid to late 90s, I had a friend who informed me that BWSS would be the best place to learn. Besides, if I decide to return to complete my family science degree, I will have that under my belt. So off I went to BWSS and everything just fell into place. I had to learn to listen with my heart, and now I am no longer a combative listener. Thank you for listening to me, it was an honor. Awesome. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Do you have any questions? Hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes? <laughs> can, can you give me some examples of body language? And people, if they're listening effectively to people? Well, I think when you're listening to someone, um, to not be, to have your arms crossed and not to be looking away, not to be chewing, <laughs> but to look with and listen with empathy and understand what they're t talking about. And one of the things that I learned when I worked at social services, I used to go to these workshops all the time, is Put yourself in the person of the of the person you're listening to. Then you will understand with your heart what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Were you going to ask another question? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, now.